I'm going to go over like an ESPN article that just came out on women's college basketball. The best and worst schedules in women's college basketball. Schedules that should help. I mean, here's, here's the deal about the scheduling part. It does affect your NCAA tournament seating and all this. And of course, you know, the non-conference schedules are partly controlled by the coach and the athletic directors. And the court. And the bottom line is, if the schedule does do well, is, is schedule if teams schedule well, they generally re get rewarded by the NCAA tournament selection committee. So, which teams' schedules should help? Well, who? I mean, UConn, for example. Because they play UCLA and the Cayman Islands a day after Thanksgiving. They play in Austin against Texas nine days later. Of course, the games against North Carolina and Louisville later in December. It's not even mentioning that in the first 10 days of the season, they play NC State and Maryland. Matchups with Notre Dame and South Carolina come later in the season. Of course, they don't have that Tennessee game this year. That the one's, one's best rivalry in women's college sports ended after last season's January meeting. So, now speaking of Tennessee, they have a good schedule that could help. I mean, they open at, at Florida State, then they play Indiana and then Oklahoma on a neutral site. And they host Notre Dame before November's over. And Ohio State, with Ohio State and Middle Tennessee, is like the first week in December. Despite its difficulty, the schedule is should be still manageable than last year's. Because remember, Tennessee lost six games before Christmas a year ago against the number two ra rated non-conference schedule. Now, South Carolina, the schedule should help them. Notre Dame and Paris and Maryland six days later is a challenging start. And then, and back to back, back Three weeks later, South Carolina has to go going to Duke and North Carolina. And remember, North Cal I mean Don Staley lost five state starters from a year ago, and all five of them. So, and it, they're not even done there. They have Utah and UConn come later in the season. Whew. Now Gonzaga, the schedule should help them because they have South. South Dakota State, Middle Tennessee, Belmont, and can, I mean, along 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 with teams like South Carolina, South Dakota State, Middle Tennessee, and Belmont, Gonzaga, year after year, disproves the notion that smaller teams from the small leagues can get the power schools to play them, but yet they have done it. Gonzaga has with games against Washington State, Stanford, Louisville, and Arizona. And a win in any of those games will help boost the Gonzaga's NCAA tournament seed. Of course, they also the they are favored to win the, the West Coast Conference. Gonzaga is, and they have two quality mid-major matchups, hosting the Jack Rabbits and Toledo. So now, Doran Dame, the schedule should help them because they play against three potential top ten opponents: South Carolina, Tennessee. And UConn. It will go a long way to helping them to get like a two or three seed. If Notre Dame goes on three in those games, Illinois and Purdue offer a solid competition that become must must wins for Notre Dame to stay among the top sixteen teams in the in the country. And I did put a community post about this there. Olivia Miles, she might be right shorting this year. We don't know. Now schedules that will hurt. LSU, yeah, I'm saying it, it's according to the article. You can't deny it. It, it ultimately didn't matter that LSU had the number 323 rate, rated ranked schedule strength according to the net last year. A national championship is a national championship regardless of the path. And that's what the article said. But that doesn't mean that the schedule wasn't criticized all season long. It was a chief reason why they were only a three seed, despite a 28-2 and two record. The schedule is better, but not by much. They have Colorado and Virginia Tech on the schedule in November, which will help immensely. LSU didn't play anyone else 
anyone as good as either the Buffaloes or Hokies in the, in the first two months. However, everyone else on the Tigers Night Conference schedule this season, with the exception of Virginia, at a Thanksgiving event in the Cayman Islands, is ranked outside of the net top 100 in 20 in 2022 to 23 I mean 202 the 223 yeah on the ranking more striking is that six of those teams were also lower than 300 so once again the schedule could really hurt LSU in terms of seating especially if they lose an SEC game too I mean I'm telling the truth while Ole Miss, their schedule could help hurt them because LSU proved uh, having a, non, a weaker non-conference schedule might not be as big of a deal, but December, November and December games won't do much to help the NCAA tournament seeding. What well, could be the best Ole Miss team since at least 2007, which, but six of those opponents were 252 or below in the, in the net ranking a year ago. Plus an 11-18 Temple game, Temple may make up more than half than half of the Rebels' non-conference schedule. Virginia Tech's schedule is going to hurt them too, because they play playing two teams in Iowa and LSU in November is appealing. But Kansas is the only other opponent that is likely for an NCAA tournament at large bid. They play in five games against teams that average a two eighty eight in the net net a year ago. Houston Christian, UC Greensburg, Long Island, Radford, and William & Mary. Yeah, they, that's not a lot of games. And speaking of that, Iowa, it, it, this isn't the call, according to ESPN. Iowa's schedule's bad. There, There isn't just uh, any game that pops other than a non than a meeting against Virginia Tech and Charlotte on November 9th. The rest of the non-conference schedule, Alfred Slate fails to provide any showcase for Kalen Clark. Kansas State, which beat Iowa last year, is a good opponent, but a borderline top 25 team. And that's the Hawkeyes' second best game. It also it hurts the Hawkeyes that Iowa State is expected to be down after significant personal losses. Well, I mean, they lost a lot to the transfer portal and in graduation. And while Drake and Cleveland State Bowling Green and possible in a possible matchup with Florida Gulf Coast are a good group of mid majors. They don't move the NCAA tournament needle. So I'm just saying they just said that in the ESPN article. So I'm telling the truth. Now Utah's schedule could hurt them. After games at Baylor and against South Carolina on a neutral site, the strength of schedule for Utah falls off a cliff, according to ESPN. They played two non-division one games. Against Merrimack, which is their first year in the Division One level, and I mean Mississippi Valley State, South Carolina State, and Weber State all finished with last season three ten in the net or worse. And the Pac twelve will be deep and competitive, but Utah won't have as much of a resume before it gets to conference play. If you want to check that article out, I will put that in the description below. So, anyways. If you like this content, you like and subscribe. And see you guys later on the road of 600 subscribers. Of course, our ultimate goal is a thousand or more. And liking the video, commenting the video, interaction really helps the channel a lot and is greatly appreciated. And that's all I gotta say. Of course, hit the notification bell as well.